Welcome back and thank you for keeping it NTV. You are still watching NTV Weekend Edition. Now, over a fortnight ago, the World Bank announced that it had suspended funding for future projects as applied for by the Uganda government. Now, the move has stunned the business community who were looking to foreign direct investment as well as World Bank support to the business community in the aftermath of the COVID-19 inspired crash. Now, to understand the full impact of this World Bank decision, we do have the Executive Director of the Federation of the Small and Medium Enterprises, John Walugembe. Good evening and welcome to Talk of Good the Nation. Good evening, Mildred, and thank you for having me here. It's always a pleasure to join you. Thank you so uh, much for honoring our invitation as well. Thank you very much. So some people are looking at the World Bank decision as yes. a government situation and mm. yet uh, the impact or the effect mm. actually cuts across. It's what is the impact of the World Bank decision to the business community in particular? This is a misconception because I hear many people saying, oh, this money is being stolen in a way, so the World Bank has actually helped us. This is complete nonsense because the wor World Bank, a lot of World Bank funding is in the social sectors. It's in education, it's in agriculture, it's to spur employment, and so on. So you cannot say that this money is being stolen by some government officials. This is not correct. If you look at the lineup of projects, they actually reach the final beneficiary. Let's look at the USMID project where they've made roads in, in all these urban councils and cities and municipalities. Let's look at another $300 million project to support climate smart agriculture. There's a project to support women entrepreneurs called GLOW. It's going to support businesses directly. So I'm going to go through government. There's another invite project, which is also about 200 million to support uh, entrepreneurs. So the World Bank is a dependable source of concessional loans and grants. Mm. They give us, on, on average, 10 year grace period. Then they give us up to 40 years to repay. Interest rate is very low, you know, average of 1.5 percent. So we, 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 you, and the, we have been with the World Bank since 1963, mm. especially the International Development Association that seeks to support developing countries and poor countries to fight poverty. So I think we must reach an understanding with the World Bank mm. on this issue. So talk to us about the far-reaching effects of this World Bank decision. Okay, so the, about 40% of our budget depends on external funding. If you look at the 52 trillion budget, we expect to generate 33 trillion locally and 11 trillion from without. Now, if let's assume that this is the benchmark. Of course, the money is not going to disappear at a go, but it means we are going to have gaps in the future. How are we going to fill this huge, huge gap? Mm -hmm. If you look at the alternatives, if you look at the Chinese, the Chinese are not investing in social sectors. In fact, as looking at something, they only give about 20 million for s a social support in 2022, and their own newspaper said this is very uncharacteristic. They invest in infrastructure, Karuma and stuff. So every funder has their own priorities. Mm. And in this case, the World Bank has been a huge investor in social sectors. Now, when the announcement was made, the markets were rattled, our currency started uh, depreciating. Now, if we start having a depreciated currency, mm. you're going to have issues with inflation because the cost of impo imports will go up. As a country, you know we import a lot. Even for our industries, th we import some key rom uh, inputs. So what that means is that now Ugandans will start struggling with high commodity prices. Then it will bite everyone. Now those people who are there saying it's for government, World Bank is helping us, they'll understand the implications. For business people, the taxes, because if government is losing I don't know, 40% of the money that it expects to come in, what will happen? Mm. They'll have to come and run after you because they want to fill up the gap. Mm. So we, we really have to f uh, be very careful uh, when we are handling this issue. And just to s make it clear, we are not in support of, um, someone may think we are, we are paid and so on to promote homosexuals and so on. This is not the point. We are simply saying, every time you make a decision, look at it from a 360 degree perspective. Have we even done a detailed situation analysis to understand what's the impact of homosexuality mm. and what's the best solution? Mm. We can't just rush through one solution and say, this is the, uh, this is the silver bullet to solve homosexuality in Uganda. I don't think so. Mm. So I think as Ugandans, we need to have a thorough debate on what we need to do with this issue. If you look at the law, we already have the penal code, section 144. It addresses some of these issues. And then if you look at the new act, 
It's so widespread. For instance, if an ambassador came in with their partner, their partner in, in effect would get arrested. If tourists came, two homosexual tourists came in and went into their, their room somewhere, mm. they, they would be candidates for arrest. Why? And then we are saying we want tourism receipts and so on. What we need to when be against this promotion. These people who are actively seeking mm. to influence our children with their their own mindset. You know, if if you if you want to promote homosexuality, then if and you can't have your own children, then leave our children alone. This this we agree. Mm. But the issue what where we agree where we disagree are the methods. We shouldn't seek to kill a mosquito with a hammer. Mm. Yes. So it looks from the way you have stated it, it looks like we as Uganda we do not have uh, Ex uh, very many alternatives when it comes to no, we have sourcing. very few, very few alternatives, and uh, and moreover, businesses have been hit by COVID. The economy is just recovering. You know now, inflation is starting to stabilize at around 3.9 percent. We are projecting that the economy will go at 6 percent. Now we are likely to go back where we started. You see, and I don't think this is fair to people who are running their small businesses, to young people who are looking for jobs. So that's why we are asking, we are appealing to the politicians. You know, for you, you're cautioned in a way because you depend on the consolidated fund. But for a lot of young people and SMEs that are struggle, that are hustling, they mm. don't want to absorb all these shocks. Mm. Yes. So for, for, for many, the state has been the biggest business partner. And that, now that the government is reconsidering uh, budget expenditures, what is the likely effect in this regard? We have told, it, so it means government all along knew that they were being wasteful. Because we've been telling them, cut expenditure, cut expenditure. They were rotating around this is, the problem. This is one of uh, the alternatives that they are looking to. To cut expenditure. Mm. You cut expenditure to what extent? You, you cut expenditure and then you're able to save $9 trillion in a year. It's not possible. So what we are saying is, A, government needs to reduce expenditure. Whether or not World Bank funding is available, I think that's a, that's a given. But what we are saying, we shouldn't take rash decisions because we are grandstanding, because we are promoting certain moral values, and then we harm ourselves. If young people are poor, it means they can be easily compromised. But we want to know how, how this impacts the business community directly. Taxes as a starting point, because government needs money. The business community will have to pay taxes to the cost of inputs. People dealing in trade, they have to import. They'll find that things are more expensive. You, the customer, you'll find that you can no longer afford. People's businesses will fold. You know, foreign investors will not want to come to Uganda because they know they'll find it difficult to get needed foreign exchange. Mm. The markets, not because the World Bank is giving a signal. Other people who invest their money here will say, well, in Uganda we are not sure. And we can't know who these people are, these investors. Some of them are homosexual, some of them are what? Mm. So. We, we need to be careful as we come up with some of these laws. So what then are some of the interventions that you think government should put in place to see that the, these effects uh, are cushioned, especially to the business community? No, we just want to tell government to prioritize one thing, which the Prime Minister mentioned. Let us talk to the World Bank. The World Bank has mentioned that this law is inconsistent with their value system. And every time you're picking money from someone, you have at least to take into their consideration what their value system is. Mm. And it cannot be that since 1963 we have been taking money from an institution whose values we don't believe in. So what the World Bank is simply saying, we want to be confident that our resources are not being used to exclude others. I don't know if you get my point. Get Let you. everyone access. If you're making... Because their policy is inclusive. Exactly. And government, all government needs to do is to de look at... The, because go the World Bank sent a team here that reviewed its portfolio and made the recommendation to the board. Now, what government needs to do is to look at that report and respond and engage the World Bank on those issues. Shouldn't be on TV telling people the World Bank is bad, it's dictating, it's fighting against our faith and so on. Uganda is a secular state. Mm. What we want to do is to ensure that we have a country that is able to create jobs, that is able to support businesses to grow. Each of us can have our own value systems and we can live with those. As a country, we shouldn't choose laws and legislation to put mor moral agendas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you could speak to business associations who are overwhelmed by business officials afraid of the coming situation, what would you tell them? 
Business associations need to engage with government because for us, we are not politicians. For us, we are representing a constituency that is helping this economy to grow. So business associations need to go back, need to conduct research, need to engage with public officials with evidence to show that this is the negative impact this is going to have, and to propose alternatives. Of course, at the moment, they are limited, but let us try to engage and work together with government to ensure that we get out of this tight situation. Now, the World Bank has been involved uh, in several projects like, you know, infrastructure development yes. that touched on their relationship with private businesses. Yes. How can SMEs cope up in this situation? We want good infrastructure. Because, for instance, they are funding a project for r access to electricity in r rural areas. We need this. We are talking about revamping roads in Kampala. We need this. The, the city is put full of potholes. If the World Bank is helping us to ensure that we spend less money repairing our cars, that we move fast, we don't lose time w working, I think that is a good thing. Mm. We can always resolve these homosexuality issues. Besides, every other country is facing this issue. But they are addressing, deep countries are using softer strategies to address it. And I, I would urge us as a country, to be to be less loud mm. and to just make sure that we take decisions that are well thought through and that will support the economy to grow. Okay, as as we draw this conversation to a close, uh, yes. what lessons do you think we as a country could pick from this situation? I think we as a country need to make sure that we we, we are able to show stability to investors and to other even to business people I, if every other time there's a law then the funding is being cut off then the world bank is saying we are off and so on we create unnecessary turbulence mm. in the economic sphere and i think ov overall it's not very good mm. so we need to assure people that as a country we are able to uh, work with you on over the long term without bringing in all kinds of uh, exogenous things mm. yeah well, if you are a business in this country, yes. what should you expect in the coming days? It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Let's assume that the negotiations work well with the World Bank. I think that would be the best case scenario. Mm. If it does not work, ah, it's going to be tough. Mm. I would pity any business person mm. in this country, especially in, the in, in light of the issues I've talked about. The issues of the weak shilling, issues of inflation, issues of increased taxation and generally less uh, purchasing power by consumers. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, mm. John Walugembe, the Executive Director of the Small and Medium uh, Size Enterprises. Well, that conversation takes us in for a short break, but here is more to come.